Welcome to Book Talks, where you get to meet the authors of Two Sisters Writing and Publishing and learn the insights, inspiration, and instructions on how to live bigger, better, and bolder. And there's none of our authors who could tell you that on a more grand scale than Dr. Thomas Genevieve. He is an extraordinary, brilliant surgeon who is going to share some information that's going to blow your mind, surprise you, and inspire you. Welcome, Dr. Genevieve. And then it's been an honor to know you. You guys are great. I've had a great time with you guys, and uh, you guys do a great job. So, so congrats. Thank you so much. So, we are so excited and so proud that you are one of our 25 authors so far. And this is your book, Confessions of a yeah. Plastic Surgeon. <laughs> and it's Shocking Stories About Enhancing Butts, Boobs, and Beauty by Dr. Thomas Genevieve. <laughs> so the title alone grabs me and I yes. just love the content because it's titillating on one hand, but there's tremendous substance behind it. Yeah. And that starts with your story. Can yes. you tell us a little background about you, your family, where you grew up? Uh, we're Turkish immigrants and we came from, um, came into the United States when we were two and I was two and my sister was one and we had, we didn't have a lot of money. We played a lot in the street. We just did fun things. We never really knew we were poor. Um, my, my mom worked really hard to get her PhD with two small kids in another country. And she instilled in us a lot of work ethic, I think, at that point. And then you went to an Ivy League university and became a yes. board-certified plastic surgeon. Yeah. And, <laughs> and some of the stories that you share about the work that you've experienced are just mind-blowing. Yes. But can you share a couple stories from the book about crazy things you experienced before you opened your center? Yeah, most of it, I, I think the craziest stuff, I mean, there's some stuff that happens in the operating room that are not in the book, but I think the craziest stuff is, is when you actually meet people for the first time. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people have been thinking about the surgery, some of them for 10, 15 years, and they're so nervous they're sweating. They, they won't even pull their gowns open. They haven't had a man see them naked in 10 years. Even though they've had intimate relations with their significant other, they wear t-shirts or gown. To me, it, it's sad. And uh, at the same time, I'm like, well, we're going to make you look awesome. Mm -hmm. And, and mm -hmm. basically screw what your friends say. This is all about <laughs> And uh, they get a lot of flack from their friends. Oh. And I'm like, they're just haters. Don't yeah, this is all your life. <laughs> so, but it's, it's been interesting. The pre-operative side is more, much more filled with um, lots of cool stories than ever, actually intra-op. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with a couple of stories like that where I, where I've been kind of um, surprised at the uh, the nature of how they're so, so covered and so demure because of how they think, think that they look, or this is why they got divorced, or this is why they're getting separated and, and stuff. So I have to kind of dig deep a little bit. Mm -hmm. Well, Catherine and I had the honor of coming to Texas to visit your plastic surgery center. Yeah. And we got to watch you in action. And you yes. do surgeries live on social media, of course, yes. with your patient's permission. Yes. So can you talk about why you got into plastic surgery and what exactly you provide, what services you provide? Sure. I mean, so in medical school, everybody wants to be a neurosurgeon or cardiac surgeon. And, and I was kind of vacillating between the two. And toward the end, I really liked neurosurgery. And um, I was kind of moving toward that direction. I'd gotten really good grades in, in, high, in uh, med school. So when you get really good grades, you get to, uh, you, you're in a group of doctors called AOA, Alpha Mega Alpha. It's our honor society. And you're only in the, that's the top 10% of your class. So when you're AOA, you get courted by, you know, the Ivy Leagues and you get courted by big things. And I was courted by several neurosurgery departments. And then a guy in my third year of medical school, um, he was going to give my oral, sur oral surgery boards. He happened to be a plastic surgeon who graduated from the University of Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. He said, you know what, man, have you ever thought about plastic surgery? I'm like, no, I haven't. I want to be a, a brain doctor. So I was like, just, just be on my one month rotation. Mm -hmm. And afterwards, in the, in the first day, we like reconstructed an ear, did a breast recon, 
And then we, we uh, went down to the emergency room and sewed up a guy with a shotgun blast to his face. I mean, I was like floored. Uh, the variable of, of all ages and all parts of the body. So I was kind of hooked at that point. Oh, wow. So can Young you age. talk? Yeah. And you're board certified. Yes. And you're just brilliant. I mean, we watched you in the OR and you were oh. just, it's like artwork. It's, it is it's, a little bit of art. It's amazing. Yeah. I'm not a really so, good artist. That's the problem. <laughs> I guess experience and now art from experience, but I was never like, I couldn't draw real well, but, mm -hmm. but I guess you just kind of, you kind of learn three dimensional objects and the body's in three dimensions and you just got to make sure you make the three dimension better for that mm -hmm. person. Yes. And the before and after photos and videos on your various social media platforms are just eye popping. Oh. I mean, <laughs> but can you talk about the, the most popular procedures that you do? Oh, yeah, sure. Um, so my practice has changed. It used to be all breast dogs, like uni procedures. One, either a breast dog or a lipo, some butt implants, some rhinoplasty, some facelift. Now it's these mega procedures like tummy tuck breast dog and BBL, Brazilian butt lift. So it's two turns of the patient and three to four hours of surgery. So it's a, they're, they're just called super mommy makeovers, which... I'm one of the few guys that does them in the country because they are long um, and they can be tedious and you have to have the right staff, the right anesthesia. You have to know that you can't bleed very much. You have to know anatomy. So I think these super mommy makeovers have changed my practice. And, you know, we're booked out till the end of December for super mommy makeovers. And we're booked out almost to the middle of November for everything else. And that's five days a week operating. So we are just crushed with these mega procedures. And then these minor ones have not become minor anymore. They're also like breast dog lipo or, or arm lift lipo the sides or things like that. So it's gotten longer and longer procedures lately. Wow, that's fascinating. So the pandemic sounds like it has not stopped people's no. desire to transform. No, I think uh, what happened in the beginning after the fear went away was people kind of looked at each other and was like, wait a minute, now we have time off. Oh. We have forced time off. So as long as my center was accredited and we were following the CDC, which of course we did, mm -hmm. um, and we do, um, then uh, the people were like, hmm, I haven't spent money on dumb stuff in money. <laughs> I've saved a lot. <laughs> nothing was open. Maybe I should get plastic surgery, maybe because now I'm on Zoom and I'm seeing my stuff. And I don't like what I see. Ooh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So very importantly, the safety factor. Can you talk about how your center is unique in that you have your own private OR? Yes. You have superior anesthesiology, yes. sir, uh, an anesthesiologist right there. Yes. And can you talk about the safety and the superior product that you provide? Yeah. Um... So when you're a plastic surgeon, you sign an attestation to your society that you're only going to operate out of an accredited either operating room or hospital. That's different than any other specialty. We're the only ones that our society makes us actually write down that we're going to do that. So back in 2009 and 10, I kept getting pushed around by hospitals. They don't want more plastics. They want to raise the prices. So I said, you know what? I'm going to build my own OR. And then I thought, what is the best uh, way to accredit them? There's three, three general accreditations. One is called Quad ASF, built by plastic surgeons, actually, four plastic surgeons. Quad, Triple AHC, which is the oldest. And then the Joint Commission came up with one. And I like Joint Commission because nurses and doctors know what that means. It's a gold seal on every hospital and every nursing home right now in the country has Joint Commission accreditation. So they came up with a one for office-based surgery centers, and I jumped on that. I was one of the first mm -hmm. to jump on that. Can you talk about where you're located and what your, your center is called and what other services you provide? Sure. We have two locations in San Antonio. I mainly operate at one. It's in the, called the Medical Center of San Antonio. There's about 20 to 30 hospital-type uh, hospitals, long, -care, long care facilities, nursing homes in this area. It's very dense. Um, it's in um, the middle of town. Where's Bacabacock? 
7272 Wurzbach Road. I, I'm in a building about 4,200 square feet. The upstairs is a fully functional spa. Mm -hmm. The downstairs is my offices and my surgery center. And it's not a huge, but you don't need it very big to, mm -hmm. to do stuff in your, in your office. Mm -hmm. um, we don't operate on insurance. And I, of course, only operate really on healthy people. So mm -hmm. very mentally and physically mentally healthy. Enemy, yes. Like I really dig deep. I'm like, you sure you're ready for this? Because I'm going to yeah. make you depressed, hot, ugly, not feeling good, and in pain. <laughs> and I lay it out, and I'm like, what do you think of that? And they're like, huh. And the, if they don't write, give me the right answers, we're done at that point. Yeah. That was a really, really important point that you make in the book, that you do a psychological assessment yes. of each person to make sure that they are ready for this radical transformation. Yes. But you also very humorously provide some different personality types of people who get surgery. Can you talk yes. a little bit about that? Yeah, so without ruffling feathers, I think there's five personality types um, in one gender, the female gender, and then there's three in the male. Mm -hmm. um, I guess the, the, the five, I, I would say the one, the, the, you know, completely happy and satisfied with themselves, like 5%. Mm -hmm. um, unhappy, not, not having an extramarital affair yet. Unhappy with an extramarital affair. Unhappy about to have an extramarital affair or unhappy because their partner's having one. I think that those five encompass 98% of the female side. The male side's pretty easy. It's you're a great guy. Uh, you're kind of in the middle and you're a jerk. And, uh, and that goes also when they're the significant other of that female. Mm -hmm. I can kind of tell that this is going to be a problem. And sometimes I look right at the guy. I'm like, yo, no child care, no pets, no gym 10 laundry for four weeks. And I'm like, what do you think of that, man? And if he's like, huh? I didn't. I was like, do you have a backup? The first thing I look is, do you have a mom, a sister figure, an aunt, somebody that's going to back him up? Mm -hmm. I mean, I get kind of like, I'm not going to operate unless you have some, like, he doesn't look like he knows how to take care of anything. And I, and I get really, um, like, passionate about it in the thing because I want to know if I want to operate on this person and what their answer right, is. Because she needs a lot of care after yes. having that major procedure. Yes. Okay. I've had a lot of women who say that they had care and then they didn't and they call us and they have problems. And then I'm like, well, what happened? Who, what happened to the, he, he left me. He didn't do anything he was going to say, you know, so I get a lot of that. Oh, I want to make sure like you're okay. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Yeah. So something also really beautiful that you do is that your philanthropy is yeah. donating your services to help women who've been brutalized by domestic violence yeah. um, to have free reconstructive surgery. Can you talk about how you do that and why and maybe a success story? Uh, yeah, um, actually I'm doing one coming up. Uh, some lady called me and wasn't even uh, part of the domestic violence team that sends me patients it takes a long time for them to send me someone because they have to be in the neighborhood so i can follow up with them their significant other has to be in prison because a lot of times if i fix them they go back out and beat them <laughs> they can't be on the fbi's most wanted because i get scared you know I, I, I gotta know if the person's violent not the woman but the the person Right. So that they're psychologically ready for surgery. So there's a wow. lot of things that have to happen before I get to see them. Mm -hmm. um, I had a lady, she was literally, her husband took a bunch of her hair and scalped her like an Indian. And they, he threw the, the in the toilet. So she went to the emergency room. This was years ago. And they put a skin graft. So she had a bald spot with hair on the sides like a clown. So I ended up cutting pieces of the skin graft out and closing them called up and I did it staged and I brought her hairline to the front and she <gasps> cried. And she was so happy and it didn't, it, it wasn't a, for me, it wasn't a huge surgery for her life changing. Obviously she has her, the crown of her head back. So mm. that's one. Another one, um, a lady was stabbed in the face from the corner of the mouth up into the, the ear. And I kind of did some reconstruction and lasering softened the scars and uh, things like that. They're almost like war wounds. Um, <gasps> just, uh, 
Burns, a lot of burns. Wow. Yeah. And you do it for free, and it must yeah. just absolutely transform these women's lives. Yeah, they're they're uh, they're they're first of all, they're instantly happy that someone's going to help them. They they like hug you. They a lot of them are crying, and you haven't done anything yet, but no one's reached out. Uh, the burn patients are really happy because you know they have all these burns, and they sometimes can't move their shoulders. And you cut the cut the burns. You do these Z plasties. And then you laser them over years to soften them up. So they, they get better and better. And then their confidence boosts and you start to see them get a little, their real personality start coming out after seeing you for about four to six months. Oh, that's so beautiful. That must fill you with a tremendous sense of fulfillment. Yeah. And the girls, you know, who don't know me and my new staff, a lady will come in and said, I was beaten and I have this lip, this inward facing lip, um, um, and she's been trying to get it filled with filler by non-qualified personnel. And I looked at my girl the other day. I said, do you have a police report on this guy? Yeah, I, I filed one a year ago. Nothing happened. I said, I'm going to fix your lip for free. And my staff <gasps> was like, I mean, they just got flushed. And they're like, that is such a nice thing for you to do. And I wasn't doing it wow. for them. Oh, no, like I do this because they're new. Uh-huh. So I'm going to go fix her lip. It's and for her, she oh. was ecstatic because she'd been trying to fix it with filler for four years. And no one was helping oh. her. Imagine going to all these people and no one actually just cut out the scar. It takes me like five minutes. Oh, my gosh. That is so beautiful. And what a unique way to give back. I just yeah. love that. Yes. And when I wrote the book, you know, I, we had a long talk. I was like, I know I'm not, you know, I'm not in it to, you know, make a lot of money in it. I just want to have a vehicle for people to go and buy. Right. And, oh yeah. There's family violence. And oh yeah, whatever I've made on this, I've given already to family violence, but more importantly, I, I've operated on them. So mm -hmm. that, that's mm -hmm. been a great thing. Another thing that the book has done is a lot of my patients have already bought it and they kind of buy it and they understand me a little bit better. And mm. I didn't know that you did this for family violence. And I didn't uh -huh. know that plastic surgery was so difficult, even before surgery, is to just figure out who we are. And I think that's brought a lot of awareness about our specialty and about domestic violence in general, but definitely our specialty as well. Mm, I love that. That's amazing. It just shows that your heart is in it for the right reasons. Yeah. Yeah, yeah of course. Something else unique that you do, Dr. Genevieve, is that you do surgery live on social media. Can you talk about why you do that and what it's like? Yeah. Um, so in the beginning, it's, it's, a, it's a very, like, um, austere. You start, I started a little austere because I didn't know what the boundaries were. Uh -huh. Now I joke with people and they, they, you know, we have awards for the top, top um, like we're, they call them the, so my name is Genevieve, but my social media team calls me Jenna Beast. So, um, <laughs> why? We're going to have the first annual Beastie Awards, which is the top international fan, top national fan, top Texas fan, funniest. Oh my gosh. Best. Like the other day, I got a request for, from a lady to tell her husband good night. I'm like, what? Why do I want to tell your husband good night? And we found out later that he doesn't believe that she talks to us. So she wanted to prove that we actually are engaging her. So I had to say, good night, Lupe. I was like, all right, good night, Lupe. And um, it was oh, funny. Oh, my gosh. Because then he was like, holy crap, my wife does talk to you. So, so he thinks <gasps> she's just wasting time, but it was kind of funny. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay, so that's awesome. Another is you're a brilliant marketing person. Oh. And so part of the marketing of your procedures is to do it on social media live yes. because it demystifies the procedure. Yes. Right? People yes, see absolutely. what. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you talk about how that idea evolved? Because I just think that's um, just genius. Well, I started in 2010 on Facebook Live. Um, because Facebook started something called ads and we were making 30 second ads and then they got it so that we could, we could do our stuff 
live like for a long time. And what I started noticing was people have similar questions. How much is it? Do you have pain after? When can I go back to work? What's the uh, complication rate? Do you get infections? What do you do for pain? So believe it or not, to this day, I get the same questions as people jump on. And a lot of people are like, oh, Dr. Genevieve, this is great. I, and I have my fans and stuff. But then I have people <laughs> who are like, wait a minute, I'm kind of interested now. You've taken the worry out of it. How do right. I sign up? Yeah. It's been a, like you just said masterfully, it's been an education um, a process that I didn't know was happening mm -hmm. until now I'm acutely aware of it. And I try to engage more on the education side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So social media is way more ubiquitous now. Whereas when you first started, it was oh, very yeah. novel to yeah. do something live on, on social media. So you were way ahead of the curve in terms of um, using it as a brilliant business marketing tool yeah. And it's really engaged your community and built your community. Yes, yes, yeah. I mm -hmm. would say most people know me because I'll be out and they'll be like, I saw your billboard, but I'm on your Snap. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Or now we're on TikTok and they're like, oh, my God, you're on my TikTok. Or you're on my Snap. Or I, I watch all your Facebook. I'm a super fan. So it's it's been really um, – it's been neat. Uh, I, I can't go anywhere in this town really without somebody saying, hey, man, let me take a picture. Like, we'll talk. Because I'm also on that Billy Madison show that you know of. Uh -huh. That's a syndicated show. and The yeah, like, radio show in, in San Antonio. Yeah, yeah, it probably reaches about 250 to half a million people in the morning. So mm -hmm. I have people like my Uber driver last Friday was like, holy crap, I think I know you. Are you on the <laughs> Billy Madison show? I uh -oh. heard your voice. Uh-huh. So, you have to have multiple media outlets and it all kind of fits into a big puzzle and then you need to track it. Yeah. yeah. Yes, absolutely. But you've also done Dancing with the Stars, San Antonio. Yep. You're really active in philanthropic endeavors where you're like in a parade and you oh, yeah. Yeah. go to fashion shows and you're very yeah. engaged in your community. So it's been Salsa King. I was just <laughs> Salsa King one day and did the fiesta. And then I got most <laughs> original on a Dancing with the Stars. So I've had a lot of fun. It's, I mean, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's definitely different. That's really awesome. So what's your advice to somebody who's contemplating plastic surgery, but feels scared or doesn't know if they can afford it? Oh, I thought you meant wanting to become a plastic surgeon. That's a good one, too. Oh, that's uh, a good question, too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll attack the first, which is... okay. Uh, if you want to have plastic surgery, first of all, um, get some recommendations from your friends for a while. Uh, then do some Google research. Notice that every plastic surgeon has bad reviews. Mm -hmm. You have to have some bad because you're working really hard. Mm -hmm. And then you have, you know, if you have a 4.7, that means three-tenths of a point are going to be terrible. Mm -hmm. But just like anything in life, you know, you've got to – look at all sides and be like, not everyone's going to be happy with everyone in the world. So make sure you're at least a four, five, four, six, four, seven. If the guy's been operating for 20 years, a four or five is beautiful. If you're not operating one year, you can be a five Oh easy. Mm -hmm. But at 19 years now, you're going to see some mixed things and, and don't trust everything you read. Mm -hmm. um, kind of look at the background, look at some pre and post up. And the most important thing is go meet the person. Oh, okay. You, know, you may not like my style. I don't. I don't make everyone. Uh, be, not everyone becomes a patient of mine. Mm -hmm. Maybe I, I. I talk fast. Maybe I'm very direct. Some people just like maybe to be petted and held a little differently. Mm -hmm. or, but I will tell you, ninety percent of people like my style. So ten percent maybe want a different um, sort of a, a relationship with their doctor. So mm -hmm. Most important thing is meet the person. Make sure they're American uh, board certified by the American Board of Plastic Surgery, and wherever they're operating is a certified operating room, and they're using anesthesia. Oh, I want to get to your other question, but also that that's a perfect segue into some of the horror stories you've seen, especially yeah. for people who've had procedures in other countries. Can you share a few of those? Yeah, um, so I'll get people who come in who have uh, fat some kind of oil or silicone injected into their butt. So their butt is literally almost purple and you can't really do much. And as the butt 
as that silicone seeps out into the tissue, it forms abscesses, and then you get dimples, and then you get fistula, so you get pus coming out of the skin of the butt, multiple areas. You can't do much. You almost have to cut the most of the butt away because now it's scar. Um, then I get people who have butt implants from other countries where they used two breast implants on one butt and one breast implant on another, not really made for butts. Or I'll get, I just recently had a lady from south of the border, had a procedure. She came up here, called the office, and they said, people said that you'll see people complimentary from, from these. And I'm like, no, we don't do that because that means I take over care. Mm -hmm. So we have a charge for that which is often more than the charge than if you had just stayed here. Mm -hmm. Now I take over the problems. And this lady had big problems. She had an infected wall. She had loss of her belly button. It's, she's now getting over everything. It took her three months of therapy, four months of all kinds of wound therapy, surgeries by me to get normal again. Mm. And she, she saved, what, five or $6,000? Now she wow. ended up paying forty or $50,000 of hospital bills. So... Don't forget, this is uh, it's kind of like kind of like buying something that's a little cheaper, but you get what you pay for. Oh wow! Yeah. Wow. So, in terms of people trying to do home plastic surgery procedures, they're really yeah. putting their life at risk, and they should not try to do yeah. that. Uh, you know, there's good doctors in every country and there's bad doctors in every country and certain hubs of a country like a capital or a sub capital usually has the right people mm -hmm. if you're being lured into a hotel room by somebody without a degree you're probably in a lot of trouble so don't do right. that don't go to hotel rooms for stuff right that's weird right. <laughs> when i think it'd be weird i think so <laughs> you can think that the minute they say go to holiday inn and i'm gonna inject your butt <gasps> in an office what, what the hell yeah you know where's the sterile wow. yeah. yeah that's what was so impressive about your center because you have the anesthesiologist right there everything is monitored throughout yes. and from start to finish yeah so so then you were also going to talk dr genevieve about any advice you might give to someone who wants to become a plastic surgeon Oh, it's so funny. We get a lot of people want to shadow me. I don't have time to shadow everybody because I need to know that you're really serious. Like yeah. you're already AOA it means you've already gone through med school. You're in the top 10% of your class because you're not going to get a residency without being top 10%. It's very hard. There's only two spots a year in most of these programs. Two, mm -hmm. 500 applicants for two spots. Mm -hmm. so, and a lot of high school people want to come in here and they want, they want to shadow me for like a month. I'm like, I don't have time to shadow to adequately give you time because mm -hmm. um, I don't have a residency program. Mm -hmm. I am going to be working on something similar, like a fellow to help me. Mm -hmm. But at this point, if you want to get if you're really serious about plastic surgery, you need to um, do very well in med school and then shadow a real plastic surgeon. Mm -hmm. at that point and, and do some stuff then because in the beginning it's not going to make a difference if your grades suck and you, you mm. fail out i mean mm. why did you shadow me the whole time you you didn't even you didn't put your mind to it so mm -hmm. so dr genevieve we've talked about boob jobs butt yes. lifts mommy makeovers but what about men <laughs> oh yeah do you help men uh, yeah men are so nice to talk to sometimes because they're really easy. They come in, they're like, I got man boobs. Can you fix it? Yeah, here's my Amex. All right, that's it. It's like two minutes. They're done. They don't ask anybody any questions. They don't ask permission. They're not scared one bit. They just want to know the price. And um, my consult with them is like, oh, man, I'm going to clean that up. Take away this. Take this. Here's my pictures. I'm going to give you a six-pack. They're like, all right, here's my Amex. I mean, it's done in minutes so guys are guys are supremely easy in terms of uh of quick to purchase and uh i always tell the girls this i'm like you know when it, when a woman walks into your place she wants to make sure it smells good there's no dirt on the floor there's music a guy will let me operate in in my garage if the price is right <laughs> so guys are easy breasts they'll get their neck lifts they'll get their eyes 
they'll get there. They want me to do six packs. They want me to make fake abs, take away their flanks. A lot of military want me to, to liposuction them because they get something called a tape test and they have to be oh. under 36 inches. Or they and don't their waist? Long. Yes. Okay. There's a lot of military around the time of tape tests that I have to uh -huh. liposuction. Oh, so lipo among men is popular? Yes, extremely. Okay. And also, we interviewed somebody who, a man who had an eye procedure. I think it was under eye left, bags. Probably like a lower lip left, yeah. Uh-huh. That's pretty popular too, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Guys, you know, they're getting back in the workplace. They're dating younger people. They want to advance in their job. If you got these big bags, I mean, people, you know, studies have, unfortun unfortunately, studies have shown that the better looking you can uh, appear to be, the more chance that things are going to come your way mm -hmm. in, in everything you want to do. And it's unfortunate, but the eye perceives symmetry and the eye perceives looks. Mm -hmm. First, the first thing you look in the face, you, in, in a nanosecond, you know if that person is good looking or not, mm -hmm. or when you want to talk to that person. You mm -hmm. just do. Right. Um, it's just in the scowl on their face, the way they look. Do they look young? Are they older than they appear? Your mind makes that up in seconds, maybe even mm -hmm. less than a second. Mm -hmm. So guys wanting to get ahead want to do that. Right, right. Fascinating. So what percentage of your clients are men? Uh, I would say it's, still, it's been constant between 11 and 13%. Mm -hmm. and women I make, make up more than, more than you know, the, the men, about mm -hmm. 8 to 1. Mm -hmm. But uh, guys are super easy, and their surgeries take like an hour. Mm -hmm. and they're extremely patient when you tell them to be patient. Mm -hmm. uh, they, don't, they don't really cause a lot of grief. They just want to look better in clothes. They want to wear a T-shirt without having their boobs stick out. <laughs> just, just what every guy is. I mean, I, I'm a I'm a male, so I get it. I'm like, oh, okay, right, I right. And that this bothers you. Another thing that bothers men is hair loss. And we interviewed yes. Billy Madison, the radio personality, about the hair implants, and he was happy as he could be. Oh yeah, <laughs> because you use a really state of the art procedure. What's it called? Yeah, I use Neograft. Mm -hmm. um, it's been around a while, and what it is is we take hair from the back of your your head, which is resistant to what they call dihydrotestosterone, which is a byproduct of testosterone. Dihydrotestosterone makes you bald in the front. Mm. Your hair feels, you know, it gets the chemical, which your body makes naturally from testosterone, starts to reduce the hair and thin, thin the count of the hair. Mm. Weirdly enough, hair in the back of your head, when you transplant it in the front, is resistant. Oh. Same it is in the, it's weird. Uh -huh. So when you make somebody have a head of hair, Instant, instantly they get a huge bump of confidence. Oh, wow. I love that. He was so awesome. Yeah, <laughs> it was yeah, like, yeah, yeah dude. <laughs> he's my, one of my great friends. Uh, <laughs> even we have a business relationship. We have a personal relationship. I call him maybe two or three times a week. So mm, yeah, awesome. All kinds of things, you know. Yeah, yeah. So here's another fun thing I want to end on, Dr. Genevieve, is breakaway boobs. What are those? Oh, <laughs> Billy knows this because we talk about this every time I'm on the show almost. So a breakaway boob is something a woman is unhappy with you, whether you're, you're as a significant other, you, she's either caught you with a something on your phone or she, she's about to cheat or you're cheating or you're about to cheat. So she's going to put on boobs to get attention and then leave your butts. Those are called breakaway boobs, breaking away from the atmosphere like a rock. <laughs> so she's going to do that to you if you don't start paying attention. Right. <laughs> Billy and I, we talk about that almost on every show. It's hilarious. <laughs> That's guys, awesome. are like, guys will come to my office and they're like, is she going to leave me? I'm like, I don't know, dude. What's your relationship like? You know, I don't – I would say you better pay attention to her. And she starts laughing. And when she's laughing nervously, sometimes I'm like, okay, these are breakaway boobs. You don't even know it yet, bro. And then other times <laughs> guys are like, no, we're in good love and they're in love and it's all good. Uh -huh. That is awesome. You get to witness so much fun stuff. Oh, it's but like the a women, psychiatry in here, you know? Yeah, but speaking of, the women we interviewed said it's not just a superficial, shallow endeavor. It really does boost the self-confidence. Yeah. And they just feel better in life. It does. It does. I mean, this lady uh, yesterday made me feel really good. 
I was marking her for our super mommy makeover. And uh, she's like, you're changing lives all the time. And I'm like, that's really nice of you to say. Nobody really gives me a lot of compliments and I don't expect them. But when they do come, I'm like, that's pretty nice. Thank you very much. Wow. They sometimes get caught up in the um, marketing and the, and the making sure the patient's okay and mm-hmm. making sure my protocols are in place, making sure the OR runs and the mm-hmm. spa and all these. And then every once in a while, a patient's like, you're going to change my life and I really appreciate you. Wow. I'm like, oh, shit. That's really <gasps> nice. Wow. That's beautiful. Yeah. It's nice when that happens once in a while. I don't expect it. That, mm-hmm. Here's a funny thing. A patient last year on my her first week post-op give it, give visit, she gave me a $20 tip. <laughs> I was like, what? what? So I gave that tip to my girls for lunch. I'm like, oh, that's, I mean, that's really nice of you. I don't take tips like that. I mean, right. You didn't that's know. Nice. I mean, she was nervous, and that's what she knows. And uh-huh. I did thank her, and I walked out, and I said, I got a tip. Oh. My only tip ever, but I, I, I remember that. <laughs> Mm, that was another really cool thing in your in your center, Dr. Genevieve, that was remarkable to us, that the atmosphere, of course, is extremely professional with your staff, but you yes. also have an amazing chemistry with everybody, and you do fun things, you buy oh, yeah. lunch and have treats, and you have these meetings where you're just going over everything. It was just really yeah. impressive. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. So where can our viewers find you? And do you have any events coming up? Yeah. So I'm on every channel you can imagine. If you look at TikTok, I'm at at Dr. Genevieve TV. Snapchat, again, at Dr. Genevieve TV. Instagram, at Dr. Genevieve, D-R-J-E-N-E-B-Y. And um, Facebook, Thomas T. Genevieve. I'm on there all the time. Our specials are on my website, www.drgenevieplasticsurgery, that's with a J, dot com, uh, or my spa, www.spablock.com. I do moonlight hours once a month, Thursdays, and I do Saturday hours now once a month because of the demand. Mm. And um, I cut videos all the time. I do fun videos on TikTok, like run over implants with my, with my Jeep, see if they'll explode. Do they? Do no, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> I always tell people it's really hard to break an implant. I've ran over it with a 4,000 pound Jeep. So uh, people like that. And I do dumb things on TikTok to stimulate some discussion. But um, it's been an interesting thing because I had to change from being 100% professional to being kind of a little goofy on TikTok because, again, it's another outreach. So right. goofy, Dr. Genevieve. It's on Act Dr. Jenny TV on TikTok. And okay. All, snap, so. all right. Oh, I just want to make sure everybody knows about all the awesome services you provide at Spa Black. You have some really cool oh, yeah. things where you remove cellulite. And what else do you offer? At yeah, Spa we Black? have. We use the M Sculpt for muscle building. We use the Vanquish to remove fat. We have a Cool Sculpt to remove fat by uh, essentially frostbite. We have um, a hair laser. We have a hair removal laser that's faster than any laser called the Estanza, also with veins. And now we just ordered a Pico laser for tattoo removal and dark spots. Oh, wow. So people who have John on their thing and they don't date John anymore. <laughs> <laughs> they can come that <laughs> oh, by the way, don't ever tattoo your neck. That's real dumb to do with someone else's name. So <gasps> don't tattoo your neck with a name. That's mm. really hard to get off. That's tip number one. Um, but the other things we have, um, we have microneedling that has heat, we have carbon dioxide, we have erbium, we have something for snoring, we have something for the vagina to tighten it, we have everything. And cellulite removal. And cellulite. Yeah, really impressive before and after pictures. So. Thank you. Oh, Dr. Genevieve, it's always so fun to talk with you. Thank I you hope we too. can do this again. I love it. I love talking to you, Elizabeth, and you guys have just been so fun and it was such a great process to write a book with you and I recommend it for anyone out there. Um, and then you can always find me on LinkedIn and ask me the deal. I'll give you the deal with these lovely ladies. And uh, <laughs> uh, I've already sent two of my doctor friends and they're working with them now. So Yes. Thank you so much for that. Fascinating. So Love to showcase your brilliance and the wonderful things that you offer to people and changing their lives with your services. So thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. 
And thank you for joining us here on Book Talks, where you get to meet the authors of Two Sisters Writing and Publishing to learn instructions, inspiration, and insight that help you live bigger, bolder, and better. I hope that Dr. Jenna B has inspired you to do that today, and we will see you on the next episode.